So now going back to the flight simulator itself, what we're going to do is start up our little flight simulator and the flight, the model plane that I'm using within the flight simulator is the SIG Rascal 110 which is not a perfect simulation of what will actually be flying in the competition but it's the closest that I could find in um, flight gear. We may want to create a better simulation of the plane if we actually want to get something that uh, accurately flies like the real plane but um, that's not actually the point of this simulation. The point is primarily to allow us to develop the software for the search process so we want to simulate the um, the search um, around the the target area, uh, sending the video stream, doing the um, the vi uh, image matching algorithms to find the target, and that type of thing. Now, all of that should be quite doable within this framework. Okay, so there's our little flight simulator started. Now, what I'm actually going to do is restart it, and as soon as it comes up um, and has registered itself properly, um, then I'm going to stick the um, autopilot. Um, in fact, I'm first of all going to set it to the first waypoint and put it into autopilot mode. And now what it'll do is it will launch the plane. Now the, that's a very rough takeoff, as you can see. Takeoffs are really quite dodgy at the moment. Um, the plane seems to um, roll quite badly to the left on takeoff and the autopilot can't cope with it very well. It tries to correct and ends up rolling a bit too much to the right. So um, we need to work out whether that's something that would happen with the real plane. If it is, then we need to uh, teach the APM code a lot more about takeoffs. At the moment, it basically just tries to do a navigation roll of zero and increase the throttle. It's a very, very simple takeoff mechanism. We need a slightly more sophisticated takeoff mechanism, I suspect, if we're going to do automated takeoffs. Um, whether, of course, Jack trusts us to do automatic takeoffs with um, his carefully built planes is yet to be seen, but it'd be quite nice to be able to give it a go at some point. Uh, we can see now what's happened. Now the plane is actually in the air. Uh, flight gear is sending GPS data or um, constructed GPS data uh, and also it's sending attitude data, roll data, pitch, roll speed, pitch speed, all of that sort of thing across to MavProxy here. And MavProxy is then forwarding all those MavLink packets along to the ground control station across the UDP link. So we can see here that within the ground control station, it's now managed to get lock with GPS. And you can see where it took off up here. If we just uh, move up to this, zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to see the airport. So there's the airport. This is the area, the staging area. The plane actually took off from this point right here. Then this was the first waypoint that I set, which is in the air, just slightly off the runway. Sorry about that. I wasn't very precise with my mouse when I was placing these waypoints. I imagine that um, uh, this would be roughly where we take off from. We take off down in this direction. And uh, then what we've got is a set of waypoints. And if I zoom out, you'll be able to see the search pattern that I've entered. So we can see here that the search pattern is a fairly simple one. Um, it just enters the flight area and then goes backwards and forwards along in a search pattern like this. Now, while it's doing this, we can see what would be seen out of a camera coming out of the front of the plane. Now, the camera, this camera view is currently pointing directly out of the front of the plane. We should probably set it something more like that. Uh, I'll just get it right again. That's it. Something like that, which is probably about what we do for the search camera. Um, we've still got to work out exactly what cameras we're going to have on board. But this gives you a rough idea of the sort of view we might have when we're looking down. It's a very rough terrain view we get in flight gear. It doesn't have particularly accurate terrain. Potentially, we could load the more accurate satellite view that we have, that we're seeing here, which is what Q Ground Control is seeing. And that would give us a better view of the, the video, that's uh, this pseudo video that's coming out of the simulator. And uh, the idea, of course, is that we'll then put a, uh, a randomly placed uh, Outback Joe emitting some a nice bright IR pulse and IR signal. And then our image recognition algorithms will then try to, to find Outback Joe in the search area. OK, now this is interesting. What it's done is it's come down this first leg of the search and it's now trying to come across to this next waypoint, which is just here. 
and you can see that it's actually overshot that waypoint by quite a way. At the speed it's going, it can't actually turn hard enough. Now the APM by default will try quite hard to get within the waypoint radius that you've set of a waypoint. And I've set a radius, I think, of 30 odd meters. I think it's 30 meters I've set. So what it's trying to do is get within 30 meters of this waypoint here. And it didn't actually manage to do it the first time. Uh, so then it circled around. Then it's actually trying to come back and hit the waypoint again a second time. And so in fact, sorry, it was that waypoint it was getting to. Now it's managed to get to that waypoint. It's now happily traveling down the next flight path to get up to this waypoint. But you can see that I think we're going to need to modify the APM code a little bit because we don't just want to set a huge waypoint radius um, because we want a quite narrow waypoint radius for when we're actually doing the, the dropping of the bottle to uh, the payload to, to give the water to Outback Joe. Um, but um, when we're doing the search, we probably want a wider waypoint and we need to, to be able to control the waypoint size uh, as it's flying along and make a bit smarter decisions about uh, missing waypoints than the APM code can currently do. Okay, so there it's flying along the search pattern. Uh, while it's doing that, we can watch a little bit about what's happening here with the internal status. We can see, for example, its navigation calculation. We can see its waypoint distance is currently 535 meters. We can see it's decreasing. As it gets close, it'll uh, sort of zero in on the, uh, on the waypoint. This here is interesting, this is the bearing error, which is in hundredths of degrees. So that's 0.01 degree off in bearing at the moment on the waypoint. And as it closes in on the waypoint, hopefully it'll hit this waypoint dead on, and it did. It's hit the waypoint and it's moved on to waypoint index number seven here, going on to the next one. And it's now just 90 meters from that next waypoint. So again, it's trying to hit the next waypoint, but it's actually circling around a little bit because um, it doesn't have the turn radius it needs to. to do